What's up YouTube? This is a video on how to set the injection pump timing on a on an 85 Volvo 740 turbo diesel. It's actually a Volkswagen motor, so this may be the same procedure for some of the smaller Volkswagen motors. This is a six cylinder. I think the Abbeys were five and the Volkswagens were six. So this was pretty confusing to me. I couldn't find like really good accurate information on any video. I mean, I saw a couple of videos, but nothing that really showed you exactly how to do it. So I'm gonna point that out. Um, first thing you gotta do is, you don't have to take the fan clutch off, but it's easier, um, I think, because you gotta get to that crank bolt down there, which is a 27 millimeter. So you take, the radiator's out right now because I was doing the timing belt and it's easier to get an impact on that crank bolt. But normally you'd have the radiator there. So if you take the fan clutch off, it's just four little 10 millimeter nuts. And it's a little bit fiddly with the shroud and stuff, but it'll come out. Um, the next thing you want to do is turn the engine to top dead center. Now this is gonna be a little bit tricky. Okay, much better. So you can see the notch on the right, and you can see the two ridges on the left, and that white mark on the right side is a, just a paint mark I put. But now when I turn, I'm gonna turn the motor back a little bit just so you can see. Um, well, that's forward, well, I guess that is back. So do you see that zero? It almost looks like a C that's been turned on its back, but it's actually a zero, and I put a little white mark in front of it. So actually top dead center, I actually had it wrong. Top dead center is actually right there. So it may take a little bit of fiddling. So actually my injection pump timing is wrong. Okay, well, I'm glad I made this video. So you're at top dead center. Now the other tool that you absolutely do need is a good, um, I guess this is a feeler gauge. Um, I'm actually not entirely sure exactly what it's called. I believe it's a feeler gauge or, yeah, I'm not sure. But this, this, you need this tool and I can get the Volvo part number. I'll put it in the description. That threads into the injection pump. There is, um, here it threads into the injection pump it's a 12 or 13 millimeter so engines at top dead center you have that gauge in I'm just kind of assuming that people who are looking this up have this equipment if you don't I will put it in the description so now what do you do now you set the dial indicator to 2 and I don't know if this is the proper way to do it but it's the only way that seems to work for mine I just kind of push it in until it reads two. And you can see the smaller um, of the two gauges, oh, it's actually at two and a half. So if I just keep pushing it in, now, uh, wait, I'm gonna go back a little bit. Okay, so that's pretty close to two. So the first thing is you put it at top dead center, you set it to two, and then you rotate counterclockwise on the crank, that's backwards, which I know you're not supposed to do on some cars, but those are the instructions. So you go back until you get a minimum reading. So pretty much at a certain point, there you go, it stopped moving. So that's your minimum reading. Now, you set your dial indicator to zero. And I don't know if this is the right way to set it to zero, but this is the way that works for me. Set it to zero, which is sometimes a little bit fiddly. Okay, we're at zero. And now you go clockwise until you reach top dead center again. So let's see. Get the camera in position. So there is our flywheel. Let's focus on it. Great. Now we're going to slowly go to top dead center and when we get there, right, I can't believe I had that wrong. With, the, with filming, you can actually see it much better. We look at our 
style indicator. What the fuck? Oh boy. Oh no, okay. So we are at almost one millimeter of timing. So this style indicator only reads to 0.5. I wish I could figure out a way to turn this flash off. It only reads to 0.5. So first time around, it's 0.5. The second time around, it came up to about 32. So that means the pump timing is 0.82. Now, from what I've heard, 0.9 or 0.95 millimeter is the way to go for performance. So I actually am going to have to readjust this. So this is actually a nice opportunity to show you how to do it. And my battery is going to die soon, so let's see if we can do it in time. So what you will need is a 13 millimeter wrench, 13 millimeter quarter inch socket. This is not really important. That's quarter inch, but it's just a little bit easier. And the other thing you will need, which is a real pain in the ass, is a six millimeter hex. This is actually the type of hex you would put in a screwdriver. It just happens to fit in a quarter inch um, socket. And I just put a little bit of um, like butyl, like that sticky black stuff, just to keep that um, hex bit from falling out. And so you have to loosen. I'm gonna get my tool in position and then I'll show you where it is. I just, I've spent like an hour doing this already and it sucks, for me anyway. Oh God. Okay, so when I'm doing this work back on this injection pump, it's really kind of awkward to get to. I guess I'm kind of on the tall side so I have to lean over a lot and my back starts to hurt. So what I actually do is I take the battery out and I just, this is like a pretty sturdy little area. As long as it's not rusted, you should check it. Sometimes they are. I kind of actually just like step in here. So you can't really tell, but I'm almost crouching in the front corner. Um, let's see, how can we, like, I don't know if you can see, but that's how I do it. I'm upside down. Okay. So. There is... Okay, so it's really hard to see. I'm on top of the injection pump. And you come down here between the pump and the bracket. On the left, this cast iron bit is the bracket. That is the pump. You can just see the head of the hex bolt. Let me see if I can focus better. Well, it's down there. See if we can, I can show you the socket. Okay, so somehow I managed to get that in almost on my first try. I've been really struggling with it. But you just need to loosen that bolt up. I already loosened it a little bit, so that's loose. And I'm coming, I'm accessing it um, in front of these hard lines. So there's actually like some room for the wrench to move, otherwise it's pretty tricky. So I'm gonna leave that in there. And by the way, this is like a low offset quarter inch drive thingy from Harbor Freight. It really sucks, but it's useful for jobs like this where I couldn't get in there with a conventional uh, ratchet. So there's two 13 millimeters, one right here. Loosen that up. I've already kind of loosened these just when I've been adjusting the pump, so yours might be more stuck. And there's one down here, which is kind of hard to see, but feel around for it and you'll find it. Crack that one. And then here, underneath the pump, 13 millimeter. Now, the reason I'm using this small um, ratchet is because I, do, I don't want to really touch this feeler gauge at all, even though I do every time. Well, I don't know how long I wasn't filming for, but there's a bolt here, 13 millimeter, another one down there, 13 millimeter, one here, 13 millimeter, 
Here's my dial indicator. And what I just did was lift it up on the pump. I literally put my hand under here and just pushed up and that'll increase your reading. Or you push down, that'll lower your reading. I thought I was just filming me correcting it, but I have it right where I want it and I don't want to mess it up. So I'm just gonna tighten those bolts back up. Sorry. So once you've tightened it back up, you're gonna look back down on your um, flywheel here. You're gonna go back to top dead center. You're gonna turn the motor over clockwise until you get back to top dead center. Then when you get there, you will go back to your dial indicator and check your reading. In this case, I'm at like 4.3. I think I'm just gonna be happy with that. Although, maybe I'll go for 4.5 and show you guys how to do it. Crack that one. This bolt is like getting stripped. It's actually not good. One down here. And this one here. Oh, what am I doing? Okay, this one here. Okay. Once you've loosened all of them, my reading is too low, so I'm going to push upwards on the pump. Just going to use this bracket to push. So let's push it until uh, we hit four or five. It's usually not this difficult. I don't know why it's... Uh, okay, there we go. So we're at four or five. And I'm going to try and just snug it back up without really... Um, Trying to avoid putting any excessive force on the top, like just bumping into it because that could change my reading. I'm gonna tighten this back up. I'm actually not even gonna like really tighten it. I'm just gonna kind of snug it because sometimes you have to adjust the timing again. So we're at port 0.45. Then we're gonna go. Couple rotations till we hit top dead center again. Okay. And look at that. Timing is perfect. So that's how you set it. And um, I might make a few more videos. I'm going to adjust the valves on this. I actually already got all the measurements for the shims I'll need. But um, that's a bit of a process and might be nice to have a video. And. Um, when you do this, well, I guess it depends on how you do it, but pretty much with these cars, you just want to make sure the belts are in good shape. I just did the timing belt. And uh, after doing that and doing the cam seals, which would have been nice to get on video too, but oh well. Um, I think I had messed up the timing, so that's why I just wanted to recheck it. And so that's all. Hope the video was helpful.